Hi again, it's Jason at Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I'm going to talk about propagating plants by cuttings, and I have done a lot of videos related to specifically doing cuttings on things like roses and dogwoods and willows and so on, but I wanted to drive home the point today that once you understand the basics of the technique, in this case the semi-hardwood uh, propagation technique, then you can apply it across a wide range of plant material with a lot of success, and it becomes very, very easy. But to do that, it's get best to get some practice on some plants that are relatively easy to root. And so today I'm going to take you through uh, four plants from my garden that are really, really easy to root by the semi-hardwood technique. And I'm going to show you step by step how I do it, and you'll realize that the steps aren't all that different depending on which plant we're doing. So the first one I'm going to show you here is the ever-familiar hydrangea. And very easy to take cuttings from hydrangeas. You hear stories of people saying they just stuck the stem into a glass of water and it calloused, and that's true. Uh, I find the semi-hardwood technique done in soil to be just as easy and takes less attention because you don't have to change the water quite so much. So, how does this differ from a rose cutting? And I've, I've done a lot of rose cuttings, is that the internodes, so you see this leaf on the bottom and you see this leaf right here, that distance between them is called the internode. That little section there is quite long in comparison to doing a rose. So typically, when I do cuttings on roses, I leave, you know, four four nodes quite possibly every time I do a cutting. If I tried to leave four nodes for this, it'd be the entire length of this stem. So in this case, I'm going to do it by just doing one node. I'm going to take a cut right at the bottom and a cut above the next set of leaves and then trim down those leaves. I don't need quite so much leaf surface area. The more leaf surface area there is, the quicker it loses moisture. And that to me is a decent cutting of a hydrangea. And like I say, there's only, you know, one node at the bottom. That's the place where the leaf came out. And there's only one node at the top, but for a hydrangea, that's what I'll do. And here just a touch of rooting hormone, tap it off the bottom, and stick it into a pot. You don't have to stick it deep into the pot. You're not looking to bury the stem by a wide margin. You're just looking to give it some support at the top of the pot, and that's it. Okay? Now, I didn't show you me cleaning my blade before that. I did clean it off, uh, off camera, but every time you take cuttings, you should clean your blades. In this case, I'm using a quaternary disinfectant. You could also use Lysol, that'd be fine. Uh, just something to clean your blade uh, between doing varieties, and that's it. Okay, so that's a hydrangea. And uh, hydrangeas, as I say, are very easy. Here's another one that has a reputation for being really easy to take cuttings of. And this is a currant. Uh, currants are gooseberries. Um, they're just closely related cousins uh, root very, very quickly in this kind of uh, cutting system. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a semi-hardwood. Okay, and I've shown you this difference before on roses, that if you go to the top of the stem and you take a bend here, this here is softwood. It's very pliable. Uh, it's, uh, in, in my case, it would actually dry out too quickly. Um, so I'm going to go to semi-hardwood and you want to avoid the very, very, very firm material at the back end of this. That's what I would call hardwood. So somewhere in the middle here, it's semi-hardwood. And doing a cutting on this one is very much like doing a cutting on a rose. I'm going to take a cut below a node. And I'm going to count up one, two, three, four nodes to a length I like. Strip off the bottom leaves. And... In this case, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of leaf surface area on the top, and that's it. So that should be a viable cutting of a current. In this case, I'm doing a, a an ornamental red flowering current from my garden. Okay, third one I want to show you here is actually not a shrub, but kind of a, well, a, a perennial that produces woody stems. In this case, it's Russian sage or perovskia, and I just wanted to use a perennial to show you how adaptable this technique is. So on the Russian sage, again, you do the same test of firmness, and I should have done it on the hydrangea too, but um, 
being that it was behind a flower, I knew it was going to be in that stage. And you do that test of firmness, and on the Russian sage, I think right here is a good spot. You don't want to go up into the section that has flowers emerging from it already. Uh, that's not going to uh, send new shoots properly. So you have to go back down to this area here, and I'm going to take a cut below a leaf node here, and above a leaf node here, and you can see, very similar, stripping off foliage on the lower nodes, and on the top nodes, just trimming them back, give it a dip in the rooting hormone, and stick it. And again, you just stick it just deep enough to support it, and not very deep down into the pot. Okay, last one I wanted to show you here is, actually, just saw it out in the garden and thought, I know I've had good success taking cuttings of St. John's wort before. And St. John's wort is a, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a, sh a shrub or a perennial, it's sort of in between there. Um, and this is a florist's variety, so it shows these long stems uh, for cut flowers that are attractive both for flowers but also later on for the berries. And Again, I'm just going to do the test for the firmness of the wood. Up here might be a little bit too soft. So just by feel, I can feel that this is the semi-hardwood section. So, same technique. Cut below a node, cut above a node, trim the top leaves, strip off the bottom leaves, and give them a dip. So now I have four different plants in four different pots. And when I go after this stage, after I've taken my cuttings, I place them in an environment that is going to be conducive of them rooting. And that rooting environment is actually about the trickiest bit of all of propagation. It's like, how do you stop them from drying out, but at the same time not add so much water to them that they're going to rot in the meantime? Some people accomplish that by taking uh, like a clear plastic container and putting it over top of a tray like this. And then you'll see the moisture from the plants and from the pots condense on the inside of that pot. They'll leave it in a semi-shady spot and uh, then hope for the best. And that's fine. The hazard to that is that often when you tent or cover cuttings, uh, they will rot. So uh, to keep that moisture level up, you'll be opening it up, you'll be spraying on the inside, you'll close it down. Um, if you crack it to let air circulation in or out, um, you may find that it dries off too quickly and then you come back home and you find that the tent is, is completely dry on the inside and the, and the cuttings have suffered. Um, but if you don't crack it enough at all, what you'll find is that they'll start to rot. And what a, a plant looks like when it begins to rot is it starts to blacken from the bottom up. And I've got a propagation bench full of plants here, so I'm going to see if I can find one here. Here we go. So from some roses that I took cuttings of, this one here is black from the bottom up. So that one's not making it. And that's indicative. You get a lot of results like that. Uh, when you use the tented technique. So what I prefer to use, I don't know if I can pull this into the frame of the camera, is a mist, a timed mist on my benches here. So I grow them in a fairly open environment and then I uh, use the mist on an intermittent mist on a day like today. It might only come on for 10 seconds every 10 or 15 minutes, something along those lines. So it isn't a frequent mist, but it's enough to wet the leaves, to probably keep the soil surface a little bit moist but it doesn't keep the uh, the soil soaked and it doesn't keep them soaked in between misting they tend to dry out a little bit between the misting and so it's kind of perfect for that stage of letting them uh, not dry out too much but also not stay soaked okay uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pause in this and uh, I'm gonna show you the results in a couple of weeks here Three weeks is what I'm expecting. I should either see some early callusing or some early rooting. And so uh, I will put a pause in the video and I'll show you that. It's been exactly three weeks since I took those cuttings, 21 days. The greenhouse is a bit bright, so I've moved my conclusion video over here. And all four of the varieties that I tried responded to the cuttings, although some quicker, some slower. So the quicker one would be this Porovskia, and I'll try to get a close-up view of this, but 
it went directly to root. Just an incredible amount of roots on both cuttings. So, and that's across the entire variety. So Perovskia, very, very easy to root this way. No problem at all, very quick. Next one here, this is St. John's wort. And the St. John's wort is also rooted to the bottom of the pot, at least on one of the cuttings. Uh, I think the other one is pulling back now, so uh, it's on its way. The third one here, again, the red flowering currant, and it is rooting to the bottom of the pot on one of the cuttings, and I can pull out the other one here and show you that it's rooting as well. Now the slowest one to root here is the hydrangea. And I've said that hydrangeas are easy to take cuttings from. I've had good success rates, and if I wait long enough, I'm 100% sure that these ones will come through. Right now, what I have is I have a good callus on the bottom of the cuttings, but they just ha haven't been as quick to root, and I recall that being the same last year. So I'm gonna try something different now, and I know this is a follow-up or the end of the video, but I might have to do another follow-up after this, because I've taken some additional cuttings of my hydrangeas, and I put them into this box here. And uh, some people have asked me in the past, well, what if I don't want to make a misting system? What if I don't want to spend $100, $150, and go through the trouble of making a misting system? I'm just trying a few cuttings. A box like this is a good option. Uh, you can probably see there's condensation on the outside of the box. And I've rigged up across the top here some vent holes, which I've just covered off with a piece of, of scrap plastic. Uh, and I can adjust that to allow it to vent or not vent as much as I want to. Uh, here I've taken some additional cuttings and I want to show you what I'm going to have tried differently here on the hydrangeas is that previously I showed you I was doing semi hardwood cuttings and that would be from the region down here where you can see there's some firmness to the wood. What I'm trying with these cuttings here and I'll try to get you a, again a close up shot of those is I'm trying some tip cuttings, some softwood tip cuttings which softwood cuttings are uh, a little trickier in terms of having to try to keep a lot of moisture on them, but they can root a lot faster. And I just want to see if that's the case here. So I'm going to give this a cut above one of the top nodes here and pull off. And you see that I'm just, I'm even leaving the tip, the growing tip of the plant on and then stick. And also in this tray, I've got some, uh, I've got some penstemon. Uh, it's a, a blue flowering variety of penstemon that I found that uh, people were crazy for at the farmer's market. So I've got those cut as well. All right, so that's the update on this uh, propagation video by cuttings. Uh, I hope the conclusion you can draw from this is that it's actually really adaptable to a wide range of plants. I've done this with fuchsias, I've done this with uh, Japanese quince. Uh, the list goes on and on. So it, it, almost every uh, shrub or perennial that is able to do cuttings can do cuttings by the semi-hardwood method under mist or uh, underneath a container like this.